Hello you beautiful people, I am so sorry about the break that I've taken from my last video. It's been about two months, maybe even longer without a post and for that I am sorry. And I'm also sorry about this week's video which is basically a best of. So I was trying to get this video out around the Christmas time so I could um, have a little bit of a break and give you lots of content because I know not everyone watches all of my videos all the way through so there's parts that are you've probably not seen so this is like a bit of a completion of videos that I like and I think you lot would like so I'm just going to share it with you lot now so you may notice a few theme changes music talking in the background yes that's just from the videos that are already up on my YouTube channel every video you will see I'll have linked in the description in order that you see them so some of these range from just clips to full videos and um, but the main reason why I've taken so long to get a video out is because I have bought a house recently I purchased my first pro property and I've been refurbishing it so so I got the keys to this property around December the 10th and only around I say 1st of March was when my computer was switched back on for the first time so that whole period of time no computer no video editing no nothing and it's just been a crazy busy period so the videos should come more frequently from now on so all that period I've been working on the house refurbishing it and I've, I've kind of been neglecting my YouTube but rest assured I have been filming in the meantime and also this house comes with a garage so shortly there will be a video of me turning my garage into a little welding workshop so that should be that should be good to see so just relax and watch this video hopefully it's entertaining and drop in the comments what you would like to see more of so whether that be full videos welding techniques fabrication techniques um, kind of unique videos you know when I went to Ireland or when I made my um, small barbecue stuff like that let me know in the comments what you like to see more so enjoy the remainder of this video
Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. You've probably seen by now this video isn't like my normal videos. So right now I am on my way to Ireland. I'm going to be doing some work over there. Um, I'll be doing my standard pipe welding for the next few months. I will be returning back to my old place but for the time being the videos are going to be a little bit different. Um, it's a new environment, it's a little bit of an adventure for me. So it's still going to be like I said the pipe welding videos but it's going to be um, in a new place. So I've got my trusty PC here so I'll still be able to get the content out for you guys. Just like I said different workshop, new adventure, it should be fun. So right now I've just eaten some food. I set off in the morning, it was about a four and a half hour drive to the port. I'm two hours early so now I'm just relaxing and I'm going to jump on the ferry all the way over to Ireland. So I'll see you a lot there. The only way I can make my money is if I do them all together in one go. So it just gets rid of a whole bunch of double handling, time wastage and all of that stuff. So I'm about to do my tax. Now, all the jobs I do are two hole top. So that means no matter which way you flip the pipe, whether there's bends on it or anything, as long as it's got two holes at the top, um, it joins onto other pipes because that's just like the rule of thumb across the whole board. Two holes top, everything becomes a 90 degree flippable to each other. So bolt holes in. I'm going to make it touch the line on the left. I find that easier than making um, it be in the middle. I'm going to angle the pipe back because it opens up a gap at the top and then I can put a tack at the top, pull it forwards and then that equalizes the flange around the pipe. Pull it out. And then now I'm gonna level off the face of the flange and then tack it. Sorted, that simple. So as you just see, I've snapped off all the tacks and I've flipped the pipes 90 degrees to each other. So all the tacks are 90 degrees from where they are. Now I can use my level to level these all off in one go. The reason why I don't use a flange square for this, it takes too much time. If you see if the flange square, you've got to put it on and make sure it's perfectly level. And then when you see this movement, you've got to compensate and sometimes it's one measurement one side and then another the other side so it's a, a whole bunch of extra work i use it on a situation like this but if i can just flip these 90 degrees to each other and then just level it across all the way along it saves a lot more time The gas that I'm using, here's the gas that I'm going to be using. And I'm using one mil wire. And I'm going to be welding it at 250 amps. 
There we go, 250 amps. Here's the voltage. Here's the wire speed. So I'm about to route it now and for the route I'm doing a short circuit arc. The machine is set up on a synergic route setting so I just control the amps. So for this case it's 140 amps and the wire and volts are displayed on the screen. The wire I'm using is 1mm solid core wire and I'm going to display the gas that I'm using here now. So the technique I use to route this is I'm trying to keep my torch as high as possible to the pipe, as high to 12 o'clock as possible while aiming the wire to hit the front of the molten pool. So I'm always moving forward without blowing through or, or depositing excess metal which is going to drip its way through. For this weld, I welded it in quarters because originally this video was only going to be a one butt weld video and I was just going to take a lot of time to show you like how to do it properly but I kind of thought let me let me show you like the rest of the pipe because I'm trying to steer away from being a tutorial because I don't know what I'm doing I just know how to weld and everything I've learned on the job I've gotten good at I'm by no means an expert when it comes to um, welding so I try to, to bring you a lot along my journey rather than me telling you a lot how to do it because I'm sure there's people out there who have to weld to um, better specifications than me. Um, what I'm doing is only for heating and ventilation, it's, it's a class 2 job. I can miss 25mm of route every 100mm so it's not as strict as some of you guys so that's why I'd rather just show you a lot what I do and then you a lot can take away from it what you a lot want rather than me telling you how it should be done. With that being said, now I move on to my cap. So I rooted it all the way around, I cleaned up the two corner edges of the root in case there's any lack of fusion, and now I'm capping it at 240 amps pulse. Now the pulse welding allows me to have a huge molten pool with a lot of heat in it and a lot of penetrating powers, while also being able to um, keep it in position so it doesn't drip out. I'm coming up to my start stop now, my tie in. So what I like to do is go over it about an inch, half an inch, just to make sure that there isn't no pinholes on the start and stop. It's very easy to get them if you, if you don't go over it enough and put enough heat to melt the start stop, but I'm going to go back and grind that off after just to make sure I've got no pinholes and also the job specifications want us to do that. So the route came out really nice, there's just one spot right here. Now that's my own fault, I didn't grind back enough on my tie-ins. 
but like I said it's only a class 2 so all four of my attacks can look like that and I'll still pass it's not a problem so here's a perfect example now you can see the flange uh, moving all over the place and then I lean the flange backwards so that it opens up a gap at the top so when I tack it and then pull it out with my thumb it gives it an even gap the whole way around the pipe to the flange now without the mark on the back you can move a couple mil forwards or backwards leaning the pipe backwards so that's why the chalk mark is really handy Originally I was going to tack all three flanges on and then weld it together but then I thought that flange is only going to add extra weight so my counterbalance is just going to be more ridiculous so I decided to take it off and then I can weld the two flanges, the two butt welds and then the final flange weld can be done um, out of position instead of rotating that whole mass. But rest assured I'm not hitting the face of the flange with my hammer that's got a piece of wood on the front of it so it's more of a dead dead blow hammer and I'm making sure I don't touch the face of it a quick tip if you're ever putting tacks on and then you find that they always crack or to get a hole in it just move the torch while putting the tack don't stay in one spot because they tend to crack easily just move side to side maybe five mil even that is enough to stop the tacks from cracking now, so I'm marking this socket at 200 mil and then I'm just going to use um, the square to do a horizontal mark. My level there, I'm scraping it along the pipe while holding the level um, level basically and that puts a mark at the top dead centre and I go over it with a chalk just to make sure I can see it. Now I can just put my socket on, line it up to the crosshairs, mark around it and then burn it. I go close when I'm burning and then I raise it away from the pipe just so the sparks and splatter doesn't block any of the holes. Once it's done I give it a clean with the grinder. Later on I clean the inside of the pipe before taking it out of my bay. I just use a, um, a grinder to clean off all of the burrs on the inside. I have a gap all the way around the socket as well, so I've like 2 3 mil. And then I use my square and I have the slightest gap so when I do my second weld it will shrink and then pull the socket level. You have to always compensate for the shrinkage of the welds. And then level it to the next orientation. I put a tack this side and then I start welding it all the way around on the other side. You're going to notice while I'm welding this socket on that there's going to be a fire inside of it. That's just the excess oil that lubricates the fittings when it's being manufactured, burning off. I'm rooting it at 140 amps, the same power that I root the butt welds at. And then I'm going to cap it at 180 amps all the way around in one go. Nothing special has to be done for these sockets. I can put two runs on it, but one's good enough. Now that's the final weld. This was a bit of a long pipe, it took me a, a few hours to make, but it's finally finished. Um, follow my Instagram if you want to see more clips and videos and stuff that I do at work. I post things on there daily so you'd get a better insight as to what I do for work. But with that being said, I will check you lot in the next video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.
this video today, we have a product review. This, the G501 welding mask. So here we go. This is the 9100. Um, it's got no ad flow um, resp respirator on this one. And then the G501. And this has been my um, long standing FX um, 9100. I've used this mask, say, six years now. Five, six years. And um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a lovely mask. But this here is a direct upgrade for this one here and worth the upgrade a hundred times over. review of the G502 welding helmet from Speedglass. So this here is Speedglass's first attempt at a curved screen and I think they've done a wonderful job. Now I've already got my own G502 before Speedglass reached out to me but now I have another one. Happy days for me.
With this square branch I'm welding it quarters to quarters just to uh, minimize the pull and it's a, sh it's a huge gap I've got there but I like a big gap because it allows me to um, make sure I've got nice penetration on my root. So here we go, these are the arc shots of the final two quarters. I never knew um, until watching back this video how far my wire sticks out. To me doing it, the wire is just um, like perfect length, but here on the video it seems so far. Nor do I realise how dirty my um, tip is with all this slag. Yeah, just rooting it. I'm rooting on the manual settings. I believe the settings are um, 5 meters a minute for the wire speed and the voltage is 19 volts. I find that just a, a nice setting. It really gives me a lot of control while rooting. It's more predictable. I can um, I can build up quite quite a bit of a molten pool before it drips. You can see the prep, how, um, how important it is for the prep to be at the right angle so you can get your um, wire right in there. And with no landing edge, the root goes in nicely. Here's me going over my start stops and I'm just moving it around a bit more, just trying to uh, blend it in nicely. was on my start stop actually wasn't oh I see yeah this was a tight gap and um, the pipe was touching each other so I feathered it right down to nothing and I'm just uh, giving it some wiggles just so it makes sure it touches all edges yeah you you can see that the, the pipes almost touching and there's no gap but it's feathered away to nothing so it just melts away anyway I just got to make sure I'm conscious, knowing that it's there, and I have to um, angle the, the the wire slightly onto it. Here's the shot on the inside. So I finished off that one quarter. This must be the other side, and you can see the molten pools melting everything away. Even here, going over attack burns it right away and here's the cap now I'm welding it at 250 amps nice and powerful melts everything away and blends it all in into one but you got to be careful making sure that you're still always moving otherwise you'll blow through because you're only um, welding through a root basically it's a couple mil I know I'm going to put another run on it, so I'm focusing my attention on the bottom, making sure I don't get any overlap and it blends in nice and smooth, because I know later on I'm going to um, put a grinder in on the top, open it up a little bit and then put another run in on it. When I'm doing this, I'm watching to make sure I'm still touching the top of the weld as well as um, the bottom of it is going in nice and smooth. And you can't see it, but I'm rotating the pipe at the same time. I'm trying to um, make the welds um, be flat, like a, almost like a V, a V prep, just welding flat inside of it.
And I think we've jumped to the other side. I never knew how much I, um, my hands sh shake and, and how much the torch moves when I'm doing this. But luckily for me, I've got pulse, so the pulse just makes everything blend out and you it's really hard to um, see the hand movements when you're welding like this. But I've got quite a long leg length on this, like I said, because I know that I'm going to put another run on top, so I'm welding it a little bit different. There's no need for a fill because um, a nice powerful bottom run and then a, a, a less powerful ceiling run on the top is perfectly good enough. Here I'm coming over my stop, my start stop. And I tend to slow right down before going over it and I go over it by at least 10 mil. That way I know I've got a nice penetration and there's no pinholes in it. And here's the second run. This whole time welding, my torch angle is um, square on. The whole time it's um, aiming for the center of the pipe. We should be coming up to the finish of it soon. I always stagger my start stops as well on the two runs, just in case there's any leaks. It's not. Um, it's just a bit more of a harder path for the water to come out. All of this job anyway is all low pressure stuff anyway. It mostly carries water and um, coolant around data centers. So again coming up to my start stop. There we're going straight over it and it's all done. I mean, I'm happy with this type of weld. I'm not sure whether you lot will say it's good or bad, but for me, I'm, I'm happy with that. You can see by the color, it's not overheated. There's two runs on it. I could put a third run on it, but there's no need. And the root, you can see, it's gone around 100% all the way. I can't complain with that. So now the square branch is done, it's time to put the final two 14 inch flanges on, cutting off that brace. 